Good morning, everyone. Peace and love to you. Greetings. What, what a very beautiful day. All right. It's very good to be alive and to be here once again to share this moment with you in hand-built pottery and sculpture. My name is Kimberly Wright. Uh, so today everyone knows that we're going to be working on a uh, on an elephant pinch pot. Well, I guess I just revealed the animal that I'm going to make. But however, if you want to challenge yourself, feel free to uh, go ahead and construct another type of animal. But if you are just really interested in making an elephant, then just come along for the ride and feel free. While I give uh, other participants just a few minutes, uh, I said about five minutes to get uh, into the class, I'm going to start typing some instructions in the chat, but I will not be able to, uh, I don't, I, I'm not sure. I, I guess I'll have to just clean my hands, but I was gonna say I won't be able to be, keep typing in the chat, but we'll see how it goes. All right, greetings to everyone. The project today is a elephant pitch pot. So at this time, you want to go ahead and get your um, tools, your clay, everything that you need if you are participating. So we can get started. We have about two more minutes. Uh, First, pinch the pot. Two, one, stroke. Mm. Three. Um, Yield, and uh, Even though I'm writing these simple instructions, there are a lot of uh, steps in between those, so uh, we'll get it all done together. Um, maybe. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop here and get started because it's about ten thirty five. Attach. First. All right. Okay, so I'm going to come closer to this table to make sure you are able to see. So here is the clay that I'm going to use. This, uh, looking at the, the size in my hand, it doesn't matter what size you use. Like I said, if you don't have that much clay, then you don't have to use, you can make a smaller piece. However, I do have more clay for my other um, parts to this so if you don't have, if this is the, the only amount of clay you have, you need to break that down in half. And so I'm basically gonna start from a ball. All right, so. 
So my particular dish is going to be more of a bowl than a pot. You have to ask yourself if you want to construct a bowl or a pot. So it's up to you. But first thing we're gonna do, of course, is put my thumb down into it and start to go around in a circle. You can see the outside and the inside. And as I am constructing mine, you should be doing yours too. But one thing when I'm going to concentrate on is opening this up wide. I'm opening my piece up wide because I want it to be a bowl, not a pot. But I guess for me, the rule is not to make it no thinner than my pinky finger. Right now, it's way thicker than my pinky finger. As you can see, it's on the side, so I'm continuing to pinch. I can use the table to flatten out the base or bottom. Although I'm working on some canvas so it doesn't get stuck, you can work on newspaper, a piece of cloth you have, whatever feels most comfortable. All right, so even still, it's kind of like almost like a rush job, but if I were working under some time constraint, I would just have to get it done. So right now it's 1037. I think I'm going to keep pinching this until about 1040. So keep working. This is what I have so far. I'm going to continue working and widen this out. I even want it a little bit more wider. So I'm pressing the center down flat on the table so I can get some more pressure out to make it wider and make the base of my piece flatter, as you can see. That's why I'm pressing it on the table to get it wider, but still not to uh, compromise my sides. Still want to have sides to my bowl, so to speak. And now I'm all, actually, as I'm pressing the bottom out, I'm going around working on the sides to make sure they're the same thickness. Sometimes your fingers are the best tool. You can use tools, or you can just use your fingers. So coming closer, have a better view of the camera of what I'm doing, so to speak. bowl is looking pretty good how I want the deepness and the outside but however I'm going to take a tool right now and meet it up so first I'm going to kind of turn it over on the edge and just kind of keep doing this a couple times to get the edge nice and square, squared out. As you can see that how that's how that looks. You know I have me like a better edge. And now I'm gonna use my spatula and a piece of newspaper to go around the bottom to kind of uh neaten that up. So as far as smoothing your piece or the roughness that you want to portray, that's all up to you. At the end of uh, the completion of the project, as far as making what I'm doing, you can scrafito some uh, designs in your piece. If it's an elephant, if it's not an elephant, whatever, animal or 
whatever you're making. You, or you can even snip trail some raised design into the piece. If you've already or interested in something like that, remember to keep your tool clean as you're smoothing. I'm going around the bottom, creating an edge, even edge towards the bottom, and I'm smoothing up the sides, but keeping my hand in the inside to add some pressure. Pinching that smooth, going around my edge again. Finishing going around the bottom. When you're doing this type of smoothing, what I'm doing on the outside, you can also use a rib, a rib if you have one. Use what? A rib. Oh, okay. You know those tools that look like a kidney or a rib, the round plastic tube, a uh, plastic, to, uh, or the metal ones, you know, the metal, the metal things that we use. Some of them have yes. teeth on them, so, so yes, ma'am. All right, I think I'm almost around the bottom and base of this piece. And so now what I'm going to do is take either newspaper, I'm just gonna take the first few sheets from this paper towel, or some paper towel and, um, me the top portion of my mold. So I'm going to spray this to get it moist so that it'll hold. Then instead of just balling this up, I'm going to fold it kind of neat so that it will create a smooth surface inside my dish, so to speak. Breaking it down. So I'm giving this the time to leather some before I even continue to go on the smooth. However, I want to go ahead and uh, put a mold inside of it. And so the smooth portion, I just wanted to use a little paper towel. So I'm, for the rest of it, I'm going to use newspaper, spraying that as well. For the rest of it, so I don't have to waste too much paper towel. This stuff is like costly and reusable. Kind of balling it up and putting it in the rest of my, in the other portion of my bowl where it needs to go. So even though I put that one piece, I think I'm just gonna add one more thin layer. One more what? Thin layer of paper to fill it up. Okay. It's hard for me to hear. This step is optional, but however, I find that it really helps me. So if you want to continue, go ahead and follow it. Do so if you feel like you don't have to do this for whatever reason. Do your thing. All right. So Kim, why did you use the paper towel first? I said because I can, instead of balling it up like how you saw me just do that newspaper, I folded it over neat so that the surface could be smooth inside my clay so it oh, would have okay. a smoother surface than just balling up the newspaper. And so now, on this piece of newspaper that I've already been using, I have my mold, it's all the way to the top, and I know that because I can bear it, it's like popping out pretty much. I can hold it 
Meaning, like, I can barely hold If I hold it, it's kind of like popping out, but I can tell it's definitely at the uh, level of the rim. So I'm just going to kind of, like, flip that over. And I have me a mold now so that when, I'm, when I want to work on it on this side, I don't, um, it doesn't collapse. So right now I can smooth this out a bit. I can spread, smooth my fingers, and my sponge. I'm dipping my sponge in water and squeezing it out all the way. And now I'm smoothing my pot or bowl. So although I'm going to, I'm smoothing with my, if I have some rough areas, I'm smoothing that with my finger, but then going back with the sponge, the sponge just fine tunes or fine smooth over something. And so once again, if I see any really deep uh, nuggets, pockets or whatever, I go back and smooth that with my finger. And if it's something I can't get to, like this edge, I can go back and smooth that with my spatula. And I'm dipping that in the water just to give a... Uh, and I feel comfortable doing that now, even though I'm like making it more moist, it's because I have that mold inside of there. All right. I'm going to come back and smooth that better. However, we're going to move on to the next step. I'm scraping some of this slip or clay off the edge of the table that I've been scraping off of my spatula. And I added that to an uh, area on the side of my bowl that did not have enough clay. So if you have any clay you need to add or take away, feel free to do that. All right. So the only side that I have that looks pretty compromised or a little bit ragged is right here. If your piece is sinking all in or pushing all in, that means your mold was not uh, full enough. Like mine just pushed in right there, but all I have to do is put my hand up under there and bring it out. All right, so now we're gonna put that to the side and move on to the next step. So I'm moving the bowl over to the side so that it can weather. Moving my water so I don't make a mistake and push it over. And now the next thing I'm going to do is get a sufficient amount of clay. I have uh, the amount that would still fit in my hand, so to speak, as you can see. I'm beating that together, and what I'm going to do is roll a fat coil. Are some of y'all working? Y'all just watching. Hello? I don't have my clothes in watching. I'm not watching. Anybody making something? Um, I'm not making anything right now because I got to watch. I got a lot of stuff to put in and put on my table to get to that part. Party poopers. I'm you sorry. Know you <laughs> move too fast for us and experience. This ain't no fast. It's so slow. All right. So anyway, I have this piece of clay, and when I roll a uh, clay on a canvas, it sort of dries the moisture out. However, if you're going to be taking forever to roll the coil, you might want to roll more on a smooth surface. But since somebody said I work fast, I think I, think I can go ahead and roll my coil fast enough not to dry it out. So even though I started my roll, now I'm going to squeeze it down to, I think, the level that I really want that's in proportion to the... Uh, bowl that I have. 
go from here, I squeeze it down some so I wouldn't have that much work to go or to go. Yeah. You're making a dingling, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not making a doorbell uh, ringer because <laughs> don't add. You know that's what we call it. <laughs> yeah, y'all know you be, we make dinglings, the doorbell ringer, ding dong. Eat may, eat may. That just tip of uh, <laughs> All right, so I have a coil that is thick that I have not measured, but I'm just eyeballing as it pertains to how thick I might want my legs to be, so to speak. <laughs> so I could have probably just a little bit more play on here because I want my legs to be about this thick, but I want the coil to be longer. But instead, I'm just going to work with what I have. So I'm going to take this needle tool or pro tool, and I'm going to first do what? What should I do? You're going to slice up four legs. How? You're going to go um, come down, come down like you was cutting, uh, uh, like it was a roll, a cinnamon roll or something, I would say. I, I guess that's what I would say. That didn't even make You're going to start in the middle. Cut it in half cut first. Cut it in half. Thank you. Oh, okay. I don't cut no cinnamon roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's morning time. Maybe you think about cinnamon roll. So you cut it in half. So now, <laughs> what do I do now? Cut, cut those in half. In half. You're going to roll it some more. Cause they're too short to cut the other, the other two in half, ain't yeah. No, cut the two halves my in elephant half. is short and fat. My elephant ain't with long legs and fat. How do oh, I cut? Sorry. Hold on. Some people are saying the right answer. Cut yeah, two, cut each one of those halves in, half. in half. How do yeah. I cut two in half? Line right. them up together. Line them up one in front of the other. And then Line cut them in half. Good job. And as you can see, but acknowledge that this is Deborah Bell giving you all the right information, teacher. I want you to acknowledge that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. So from there, if you have to take a ruler and measure, by God, do so. But I'm just going to eyeball my half would be there. And those are going to be my four legs. So, hmm. Hmm. so if you was making a giraffe, your leg need to be, a, you can roll them little fold a little bit longer, make the leg a little longer, huh? Yes, if that's enough clay for you to use. If meaning right. like, you have to get the amount that's appropriate. For whatever you make it. So right now uh -huh. I have my my washcloth handy so I can wipe my hands. Since I'm on video, I don't have time to go to my sink. And the next thing we're going to do, it said construct legs. We're going to build the head and ears. What do we want to? What shape do we want to use for the head? Like. Go ahead. Um, an oval shape. You can use an oval, but basically an oval comes out around. It's just a round shape. So for my head, you can see this piece of clay, but I think I need a little bit more. Just a little bit. Oh, that's a big old head. Elephants are huge. All right. So you're going to beat that clay into submission, making you a ball, so to speak. And 
are you all going to replicate or make this dish at some point later? I can't hear what you're saying. I said, are you all going to make this particular piece or something later on? I mean, are you going to make a dish, an animal pinch pot? That's what I'm asking. Anybody? No? I plan to. All right. Well, I would like to, but I need to, I got so many projects on my table. Now that I need to finish, can I finish those first? You can always make it, you can always make it later. That's fine. All right. So I have yes, this. I would like to. Go ahead. I would like to make one for my bathroom. Something put all the something in my bathroom. Okay. So I have this ball of clay in my hand. I'm able to hold it without it falling or anything. But what I'm going to do is just start to press it or beat it on the table to um, get the back flat so to speak and while I'm doing that I'm going to press the end to make it ovalish but what I'm hoping to get out of that is like the oval part is my chin so don't forget elephants have all types of faces or animals whatever animal you make in giraffe or rhino or whatever you plan on making now, I can leave this solid or I can scoop it out some because it's so thick that I, will, I can save some of the clay. You know, it doesn't have to be that thick and that's gonna relieve me from, that's gonna relieve me from um, feeling like it's gonna bust in the kiln, so to speak. So, for me to make mine stay neat, I can just start to scoop that out, or I can make me a border around here to keep it all neat. I'm making a border about the same thickness. And even though I just drew a line, now I'm gonna cut a little deeper so that it can release or raise up the clay that I'm trying to dig out or scoop out in the first place. So then I'm going to take my loop, circular end, not the square end, and just start to lightly dig that clay out or scoop it out. And I'm not going to go too low because I still want some thickness in the facial area to have, uh, to be able to make my details so that when I press into that uh, my face just doesn't go straight through. I want to, you know, create some eyes or whatever. Or maybe possibly even a nose. Does a, what kind of nose does an elephant have, Miss Brenda? Fang? She's probably not unmuted. Let's a flat, flat, kind of flat nose, like Hold on, really. said, hold on, hold on, I said it's Brenda Fang. Sorry. Sorry about that. Can I answer? It's a snout. No, no, no. Brenda Fang. Brenda Fang. She said, can I, and then went on to answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying to her about sitting next to her in class. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. I said to you, I know your phone was, uh, your thing was, um, your video was muted. I said, I wanted to leave some thickness in the facial area so that I could create a mouth or ears or nose or whatever. But I said to you, what kind of nose does an elephant have? A trunk. A trunk. Who said that? Some of the Brenda thing. Diana. I said Brenda Fane. The reason why I said <laughs> Brenda Fane is because when we, <laughs> when we were doing our um, creativity, um, one of those create, creative games, when you all had to draw an elephant, yes. everybody had a trunk on their elephant except for Miss Brenda Fane. I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to jog her memory just to, so she could remember. The elephant has a trunk and not a nose. That's a long right. nose. 
<laughs> and I had just a mouth and some top ears. It's okay, but it was still cute. <laughs> so, so far, this is how much I scooped out. It's still somewhat thick, but it's not as thick as it was. And I put all that clay back into my bag so that I'll still have something to use. So for right now, I'm going to sit that head to the side. And while I am um, so while I'm making these different parts, I'm giving my piece a chance to leather, so to speak. So, and what I needed to leather first was the actual pot. The pot is what everything is going to be attached to, and it is the center piece of what I'm making. It's the functional piece where you, uh, where you are able to put your findings or your uh, little trinkets in, so whatever you plan on putting in there, food, I'm not sure. But however, um, that's the main focus of the piece. And even though the pot is what we are making or the bowl, it serves as the body of the elephant. So I'm just cleaning up a bit so my area don't get too messy. Right now I have the same size piece of clay that I began with, and I'm going to roll that out. Uh, not too thin. Yes. You gonna leave the legs uh, thick like that? Don't elephants have thick legs? I know, but as far as firing it, uh, like you hollowed out the head, it's not gonna burst in the kiln. Yeah, but actually, that's not that thick. Meaning, like we make thick things sometimes. You have to be meaning this is fine. Okay. It's like just from my the tip of my finger to the first joint. Okay. It's not that, that's not that bad. As pertains to a leg, that's something that you're trying to use to stabilize a piece of. I mean, I, I feel as though the only thing I have to do is attach that some certain things like this, even though it, it seems to see the thickness from when I had this whole ball to this, this is way thicker. Right. Somebody needs to mind their television, please. Young people, mind your televisions. Somebody. Oh. All right. So from there, whatever makes you feel comfortable, it's up to you. But what I'm going to do, I have these this uh, cookie cutter set that's like a whole bunch of circles. And so there are all kinds of circles in your home, like the bottom of the cup, medicine bottle, all sorts of things. I got circles all over this table. So however, I'm going to put up to my elephant just looking at the proportion of the ear to see what size circles I think I want to produce. And I think I do like that larger one. And so to make it more simple for you, from there what you want to do is go ahead and somebody will ask me how thick is the clay. To me it is I guess the half of half of my pinky, so to speak, like going lengthwise, and I can move it like so without being a without it breaking because it's still moist enough. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to cut this through like a cookie cutter. I think I'm just going to uh, sorry cut around it because it doesn't really have a sharp edge. And it's going to make clay get all over the piece, so to speak. So I'm taking out one circle out of that, barely able to get a circle out of here. I have two circles that I think I want to create for the ears. And so what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
place these on top of each other and cut out a shape that I would imagine that kind of looks like a C, the letter C. So, so far I've made that impression, but I'm gonna go back like so. And so this is the C right here. So let me cut that out. We'll be able to see how on the good one. We'll be able to see. I'm cutting on C. All right. It's pretty much like this. It looks kind of like a human ear. Let me show y'all. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I thought you were making an elephant, not a monkey. <laughs> Thanks for that compliment. <laughs> you just like you, Kim. <laughs> they really made it very clear to us. <laughs> so here's the shape that's like the C. And when I turn them both like this, I the space where I can attach it to the face. And then, uh -huh. like, yeah. So yeah. it goes to the side, and I'm sitting them separate so that they can, once again, leather. And on the instructions, it says make tail and build molds if needed. We built the mold. All right. So before we attach the leg, what I would like to do is get my access plate from when I cut out those circles, it's been worked a little, so I'm gonna spray just a bit of water in there to reconstitute it. I'm going to, and here's my other pieces of clay. I'm almost sure I don't need all that, but however, all right, I'm going to quickly roll another coil. Oh, sorry, yes. Coil. I'm about finished with that coil. I just want to smooth it out a little. Coil is looking like this. And now I'm going to cut that in half. Then I'm going to line that up. I want to cut this back off because it's not neat and flat. Like so, just cutting it back off so I have two neat sides or edges. And then I'm going to line that up and cut those two in half. One thing that I forgot to do which I'm going to do it in just one second. I'm cutting that in half. You see, I didn't go straight through. I'm actually cutting this in a succession or, sorry, in steps so that it doesn't just smash the clay down. So I have four short pieces. What I forgot to do today was put my apron on, getting a little dirty around here. So got my apron on. So are those pieces the feet? Yes. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I found the edges of the legs that I like the best, and that's going to be the side that I attach to the, uh, the base of the piece. So right now I'm going to make these feet kind of ovalish. Rather than round, I'm just stretching them to be like a little ovalish while I'm pressing them out as well. And what I want to do is add the leg here to the back of the heel and leave some sticking out, so to speak, for my toe. How I'm going to do that is take some slip and my 
uh, statue, uh, sorry, my fan tool or my feather texture tool. And first, before I do that, I'm going to press each foot out so I can work in a mass production type of way. Each foot, not each feet. And kind of sitting beside each other, make sure they're looking kind of level. If your feet are not the same level, then that will probably give your uh, elephant some motion. It doesn't have to be all the way just on one level. One leg could be up, one leg could be down. You know, you just have to experiment with it and see how it comes out. I've elongated them. I'm going to scratch each one on the edge that I'm going to add the leg, so to speak. This is how I scratched each one. Now I'm going to add slip with my spatula. I don't want to dirty up my brush right now. This is how that looks. Then I'm going to scratch each leg entirely on the side that I want to add to the foot. That's one. So, uh, Kim. Yes, sir. Uh, I think coming on the first part of the the class, but are you uh, uh, saying that uh, you want us to do a project on any type of animal, dish, or bow? I said like? so. Yes, I said that yesterday i did not give you what animal i was making but i just said i would say it for today however i did announce that i was making an elephant pinch pot dish if you want to i said if you want to be creative and make something entirely different and surprise us feel free I, and one way that you okay. can execute that i want to spray a little water around each one of those one way that you can execute that is by just looking online you know, look the uh, look the animal up that you are trying to make or attempting to make, and then you will uh, be able to see the feature of the animal. And right. all you gotta do is just keep looking at it, and that's how you can manipulate it. So from there, where you have the the foot meeting the, I guess the ankle and the toes and all that. You want to blend that in by scratching with your um, with your uh, hand too. Hand too, yes, or feathered texture brush. Also, you're gonna. I don't have to smooth this so much right now, but I do have my cup of water to just dip my thumb in. So go ahead and give that a quick spoon so it doesn't just be drying and then I have so much work to do because it's like dry. I did manipulate that and smooth it in some, but not as perfect as I wanted, but I'm gonna go back. And so I just wanna kind of get all four of those legs and feet together like that so that I'm ready to attach them. When you, you want the, the feet to be really attached to the piece so that when you are ready to attach it to the um, base of the pot or bowl, whatever you plan on making, it can even be a plate uh, that you, um, the feet will already be attached, they won't be falling off. So that's my second one. <clears throat> And I'm going to go ahead and do the other two, and I'm going to show you how to really make some ears. Well, we can't do the ears yet until we uh, get the head attached, because the ears are going to attach on there. 
Um, smooth out. I'm on my fourth foot, elephant foot and leg. So, Mr. Van Dyke, you keep it a secret. You can if you want to. I'm going to say what you're going to be making. I, I, I would guess that you're probably going to make a ram or a lion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. You can't get in my mind to sound like that. What's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really good. So, don't forget, young people, too, like what Mr. Van Dyke is kind of doing. You can make something that would be special to you, like your zodiac. Your zodiac usually uh, is represented by animals, or um, some people have, like, uh, I guess, human. It, it's like a Virgo, the Virgin, something like that. However, feel free to do any animal that you're in love with. So people collect certain animals. All right. So I have four fat legs with feet. I'm going to move some of these back so you can see really good, really well. <coughs> So what we're going to do now is get our, move some of the scraps out the way, move everything to the side, where everything is leathery, clean up a bit, bring the vessel toward you, and from here you can measure with a ruler, which I think I'll be quick. Uh, so I'm just putting a, sorry. Just put in a dot where I feel as though uh, my center is, so to speak, at the middle of the mark. And then I'm going to draw a line down the center of my pot. Then I'm going to go the opposite way where the same dot is, making a cross. I'll show you that. Let's see. Okay. Good. We can see that. All right. So then, uh, basically, I'm going to find the corner or the center of each quadrant right here. That's the center of that one. This is the center of that one. This is the center of that one. And that's the center of that one. What I'm going to do is, what I'm going to do is just scratch the surface area that I know is pretty round like the leg that I'm going to attach, uh, to attach right in that area. Even, oh, if get, okay. even if I get a little larger, then it's okay. So that's why I'm doing things in one, two, three, fours, rather than putting one leg on the next yes. one, all of them at the same time. It, it that, takes some time. You just that makes it down. look a lot easier, Kim, because I attach some legs to something and they were quite off for a minute. You think about how you can do it the best as you go. So I have four mm -hmm. looking circles yeah. coming towards the edge, but in the center from this point of each piece. And now what I'm going to do is add a little bit of spray one time water. The reason why it looked like I sprayed three times because it didn't come out. I'm adding slip. And I don't have to add just a whole bunch of slip, just as much as I would think that would help it to get, achieve it to get glued on there. Sometimes when you add too much slip, you have to do too much cleaning up, meaning cleaning all that slip up. 
It's not necessary. Okay, you may want to go ahead and smooth your legs out to the best of your ability and, uh, what I was gonna say, and put your design thin at this time. However, I know that I can continue to smooth mine out as it leathers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and scratch each. So wh where did the toes come in? The toe, I'm gonna put my toes in after I, leather mine and turn it around but but for the sake of you if you want to go ahead and design your feet at this step i'm going to put three of my legs on and i'm going to design one of the legs before i put it on so you can see okay yes thank, thank you, for you. That. all right so i'm scratching the top of the leg where i'm going to attach it to the base and i'm leaving one out so that i can completely design it and that'll be my pattern for the other ones when I actually turn it around. Oh, I got it now. The pinch part is the body. The pin yes. It, but it's also uh, my heart. Uh, it's the bone. Yes. So I'm putting slip here. Slip here. You see I'm slipping all three of them, not just adding one and then coming back. Slipping all three of them. Scratched all three of them. Slipping out three of them. All right. So you have to imagine that all of the feet are supposed to go the same way, right? Yes. You don't have to, supposed to have feet, two feet front, two feet going to the back. So whatever the front of the bowl, what I'm going to do is look at the, when I look at the sides of this, let me move these legs so I can show you what I'm talking about. For me, just looking at the body of the bowl. Uh, yeah. When you look at this side, to me, it's more rounded. But this side is more flat. Okay. For me. So the rounded part for me is going to be the elephant's bottom or the butt. And this is going to be where I'm going to attach my head. So the feet are going to be going the going the, the angle or stepping towards the head. Like your toes and your face are going the same way. So I'm turning my feet the same end where my face is going to be. Uh, Kim, yes, sir. According to the animal that we, uh, animal bowl that we're uh, uh, going to make, uh, the, the body shape uh, doesn't have to be in a circular form, does it? It could be a bowl, you know. Uh, does it, since you are making the elephant uh, bow, you understand what I'm saying? Did somebody hear what he said? No. I, I think he's saying, does it have to be an elephant bow? I said, you came in late, Mr. Van Dyke, to class, but I said that you don't even have to make a bow. I said it can be a pinch pot a pinch bowl you can make okay. a plate if you want to okay when i pinched this out it started out as a pot but i told everybody i wanted mine to be more like a bowl okay so i have the back two legs on and i turned them um, away towards me so that i could slide them close to the edge and make sure they are leveled and make sure the feet are standing out the same way and I stood over it and slid them. And so being that even though you have uh, this gap around where the leg and the body um, actually join, I, was, I could scratch the leg down into the pot. But however, I know scratching down is going to make it look like it's even thinner right there. So what I would like to do I, I'm going to call it fat, but it's really going to be clay. I'm just going to add a coil so that I don't take any of my clay away. Oh. Rather than working that into it and making sure that uh, the leg doesn't get skinny. Oh, yeah. In that area, because you actually going to be, you got to scratch something away to smooth something in. So what we're going to do now, 
Just bring half of that up and half of it down into the bowl so that the fat distribution can still be there and be looking the same. If I had to scratch some of the leg away, then it would have gotten thinner or skinny. Mm -hmm. And then we are already dealing with a fat looking animal. So it depends on, I guess, what animal you're making. If, if an animal like it's really skinny in them legs, like a chicken, Maybe you can just go ahead and scratch them in, but I probably would still do the foil to reinforce chicken legs. Because I done had some people try to make chickens before the legs are always breaking. So you have to sit that the bird's body up on basically two sticks. I guess that's what we get the term chicken legs if you want to call somebody that who has really skinny legs. So even though that's kind of like a lot to clean up, it just depends on how you really do it. All you have to do is scrape away smoothly around here. And then as I scrape that, I'm cleaning it up. going around, even though I'm scraping away the clay that I didn't need, I'm going to go back and smooth those, taking that clay, scraping it off the side. You can't smooth if you continue to have clay on your tools. It's kind of hard to get in the center of them. That's why I did two legs before I put the other ones on to be able to get my hands manipulate through here. All right. So, so far, I'm going to use my finger just smooth one time to tighten it up. Smoothing helps to pack the clay in more and tighten everything up. Sometimes I hear a lot of people, it's nothing wrong with I can clearly see when people say they want to leave a certain texture. Kim, I think I like this texture right here. But sometimes I can clearly see when people just don't really want to smooth their feet. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's better to smooth the piece and then add a texture because when you smooth it, you compact and uh, press and play in together that would, which would actually make it stronger and working the air out of it, those type of things. Are you gonna use, uh, do that scrapeo uh, in that? I said, if you want, since you've learned so many other techniques, when you get to the design portion, I said you can you can um, use, uh, you can do some scrapeo on it, scratch designs in your elephant, and you know how they have those beautiful Indian elephants that are paraded in some of those ceremonies, how they have all the jewels and the, the right. cloth on their back and that type of thing. Mm. Um, those are right. really, yeah, you might decide to do something like that. So it's all up to you. You can strike feet on something or slip trail a raised design in your um, whatever piece you start, you're going to make. So right now, although I'm going to be putting on those last two legs, I'm going to design one first. And I need my brush to smooth this joint right in here. Because it, the reason why I'm smoothing with my brush is because it's hard for my finger to get right there. So I'm just smoothing back and forth like so. Making sure that the foot has the shape that I desire. Make sure to pick it up off that cloth. Maybe I can pick it up. I want to smooth the bottom as well. Okay. 
So right here, as you can see, it's like a little dent in the joint. What I'm going to do is take a little piece of clay, roll a little coil, So as you know, I probably, I'm gonna do this to my other leg. I'm going to add just some water. Water and clay is slip, so that slip is well. I'm gonna add that coil to that little joint, so to speak. And then I'm just gonna pull that back and smooth it into the foot right here on that side. Same thing on the other side where it's hanging off. I'm just gonna kind of press and break that off. Sticking my finger in the water and I'm smoothing that in with the foot, so to speak, ankle. Then I'm gonna take, I'm gonna stick the foot on the paper because I don't want the water to get too wet on the, on the canvas and I'm not able to pick it up. What I'm gonna do where that coil was, yeah. just gonna brush it back and forth, not one way. If you brush it one way, it's gonna move back and forth. Just until the coil doesn't disappear, but I want the lines of it to blend in a little. And the reason why I want the coil to continue to look like it, it's a coil, because I want it to be like a fat roll. All right. All right, from there, I'm gonna take my sponge and dry that up so that I can draw a design on there. You can either draw a design or find something that's going to give you the right impression that you want. So, as you can see, this particular tool right here, it's square at the bottom where my finger's touching, but right here it's kind of rounded at the top. What I'm going to do is use that to press three times into my foot like that. One, I'm spacing it out, two, three. All right, that was not giving me the impression that I wanted. But however, I'm still going to use it. What I'm gonna do is draw three humps or half circles. Sorry. I will show you as soon as I'm done. That's one, two, and three. What I did was drew two lines first. I'm gonna have the hump and then I round it off the other side, like so. One, two, three. But even still, I wanna go back and scoop a little bit of it out to make it look like it has some dimension. And I will show you that. I'm scraping it out just a bit. Scraping it out just a bit. I don't know if you can really see that, but however, okay. all I have to do now is just I'm going to take the back of my this is my needle tool. I'm gonna to take the back of it, dip it into water, and just roll it in those spaces to smooth it out. So it's about that same size. So 
So now I'm going to just brush that. I clean my brush in the water. Brush those toes really quick. And dry them off with the sponge. Smoothing. Pretty much that's how my toes are going to look. It has three toes. I don't know if you can see it because it's kind of wet now. But however, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of water with my brush on those same pads where the circles go, where those next two legs go. I'm going to add my next two legs going forward. Make sure to push them to the edge, level them out. And once again, get a little piece of foil. I'm using my access clay. I'm oh, sorry, the, yeah, my access, the extra clay that I had to make a coil around these legs. And although I'm not gonna smooth that all the way in, we're gonna go ahead and flip her over so that I can show you how to attach the head and, and um, actually really design these ears. The ears are really, really fun to do. All right, I, before I turn this over, I do have to scratch this coil in so that my legs don't detach or come loose when I turn it around. So I'm just going to do a quick scratch here, Definitely. up and down. You can't see all the details, but the leg with the toes and everything looks so good. I have to make sure to design all the other ones. That's why I said it's easier to put the designs on the feet before you actually attach them because it might be a little hard getting in between them, but I had to go on with the steps just for the sake of the time in the class. I'm going to just smooth that out a little bit, scraping the excess extra clay off with my spatula, keeping it clean, scratching that off. As you can see, I have not even used a lot of moisture since I've been building with my piece because you don't need a lot of smell, a lot of water. You just need the amount that's appropriate to make sure it's attached and glued. Sometimes people say to me, my piece falling apart. Yeah, you might be uh, using, I'll scrape that up and add that to my, back to my clay. That's how you can always save clay and always have a uh, Play to make another project. See how you can stay clear as you're building. And so you don't need so much moisture that every time you build it, your piece is either so dry and cracking, you not using enough moisture, or using too much where it's falling apart and becoming mushy. So just what you have to ask yourself, why is my piece falling apart? Is it not constructed well? Or are you using too much slipping water? So some of my oil came out, I had to scrape it off and add that back. It actually is a little dry right there. So I need to put another piece back inside of there. You all can't see because it's in the inside of the leg. All right, so for the sake of just turning this over before we go any further, we want to see where and how the legs hold up. So what I'm going to do is get a cleaner piece of paper, moving this to the side. Hold on one second, young people. Here you go. Oh. There she is. 
<laughs> okay, Kim, I don't have any more clay for my trunk or my tail that I want to use. Very. I've seen that before. Wow. How did you pick it up? Very good. All right, let me try. Has a cheap screen protection before my break ends because it ends at twelve ten. Um, see if you Kim, we couldn't see what you were doing. Um. Earth to Kim. What happened? Kim, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Can't hear you. you muted yourself, Kim. I know. I'm sorry. I said you all had to hold on for a minute. I was speaking to somebody at the job. All right. Sorry. So this is so far how the legs are attached to the elephant. I'm turned around. You can see everything came out pretty level. It's not wobbling or anything. If I need to, I can spread the leg out a little bit. But however, I do want to work on this more to make it look better. It might look really good to y'all, but I know I can do better. And so from here, the head is going to be here. What would be, you see how heavy the head is compared to the edges? What would be one thing you could do to make sure that head stayed on while you are putting it on? Waiting, listening. One, I'm going to just go ahead and say you can make a mold or sit something like below it so that you know it'll hold up that's not tall enough so i'm making a coil young people and i'm looking for what i'm going to use as my what i'm going to just do is fold up this paper it doesn't have to be wet or anything as long as it and I'm going to gauge that before I even attach that. That looks really good to me as it pertains mm -hmm. to a hole. So what I'm going to do is scratch here, this whole area where I know the head is going to attach to. I'm going to add some slip. I'm going to go ahead and place my elephant head there. I think I want it raised just a little bit more, so I'm going to get a piece of paper towel. So even I'm talking to myself to say, I think I want it raised just a little bit more. You don't have to just go with whatever when you attach stuff. You have to really look at it to see if you're feeling... Uh, where it is, how it looks. The reason why I wanted it to be raised some more is because from this angle, I wanted the top of the head to be taller than the edge of the piece. Mm -hmm. Before it was not, you know, I wanted to, I want the top of the head because like the top of our heads are really like the, the largest parts of our head, so to speak. And even still, that's not holding good, so I'm folding my paper towel again. All right, and so that's holding up really well for me. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and attach my coil. 
as I'm putting it there, I'm kind of pressing it in to get it tight around the head, so to speak, to add the pressure to hold it in. I'm going to add just a little bit of water on each side. And as you can see, I have these two pieces sticking out, but they're going to go under the neck. I'm going to go ahead and press inward to get that clay to really go into the crease so that it can give some strength and stability to the elephant's head. And I'm going to work that clay into the bowl and into the head. I'm going to turn to the other side. Do the same thing. Scratch into the face and press down into the center so that that clay can go down into that crease. Around, I am making sure the back of the coil that was around the top of the head is scratched into the head and the edge of the bowl. So what I'm going to do is hold my head but remove my whole prop. Can those be the ivory, the tusk? <laughs> Look like tusk. It could. However, I'm just going to, I'm not going to be lazy not to go back and make tusk. I'm going to use that so that my head won't fall off because I need to have some stability up under there as well. And there's no fat up under the elephant's neck, so to speak. That's a big gap. So that coil is really going to help you. As you can see, I can let mine go without having the mold there. If I didn't put that on there, like you can see the head kind of sinking, but as I press that up into the area, the head really lifts up. And don't forget that you need that stability because you still have to add more to the head. Like you have to add the, the trunk, right. the ears. All right. So we don't have to do too much smoothing just for the sake of time. I'm just going to go back and smooth that up a bit with a wet finger. By dipping in my water, holding that head up, and it's not like completely leathered or anything. It's really soft. So while I'm not working, the weight of the head might weigh down. And so I'm going to go back and still put my mold there to help support it and hold it up. So I smooth that out a good portion up under the neck, but not completely. I want to go back and just get my support or my mold, fix it back, lift it back up to sit that right there, but I'm going to slide it all the way to one side so that I can work on one side of the face. So this is the side of the head I'm going to work on and not this side. But for right now, what I want you to do, if you have elephant ears, what you want to do is take the ear, smooth it out of your hand, so to speak, a little. I'm getting my... Uh, water to smooth out the edge. And what I'm going to do is take, it can be a tool like this. It can be a brush. You see these, even though I have these tools, but the, the end. Or even though I have this, I'm actually just using this end. I want to have something kind of rounded, but not too sharp. What I'm going to do is move this to the side so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm 
I'm going to make five indentions in this ear with my smallest that particular tool. So actually I'm gonna bring this tool and scrape it down like so. But I'm gonna start from one edge by making so first of all actually what I did was made a dent in it with the bottom of it like so. That's one and I'm gonna make five. That means I'm gonna make two right here and two right there. So let me do that first make it more easier for you all that you can measure it out. All right, so I made five indentions of circle, so to speak. And what I'm gonna do is drag this tool down to make that indention long. One, two, three. As I'm scraping it down, I have to clean this tool off every time to get the clay off. And this is how that looks. So when I scraped it down from the circle, I just left like a little tip, so to speak, like that. Kind of looks like the NBC logo. Mm -hmm. All right, so from there, what I'm going to do is clean my brush and go back in that ear and smooth those, that design out that I just, straight into that ear. Even though I smoothed it with my brush, I'm gonna go back and dry it up with the sponge. Then I'll show you how smooth it looks. And I'm gonna go to the edge and smooth up around the edge of the ear, so to speak. This is how that looks. Then I'm gonna take this edge right here, the inside where I said it goes to the face where it has a curve and kind of bring all that together into like a pinch. Like so. Mm -hmm. And now I am going to attach that ear to the elephant. All right, so you see if the elephant looks proper with the ear out, actually it's supposed to go back a little bit. And I'm gonna turn it to the side. And what you need to do is scratch, again, the area where the ear is going to attach. And slip. And see where you want the ear. Also, I don't know if I want the ear to lie, lay on the pot, so to speak, for stability. But if you do, you can scratch there it adds slip as well. So Miss Diana, you said you don't have any more clay for your uh, trunk and something else. I was gonna say either you have to wait until you get more clay or you have to mm -hmm. make your piece smaller. So if you want to, you can wrap your piece up and wait until you get more clay. And so I've attached that somewhat and I'm going to, uh, I'm bending the ear, the shape that I, I desire. And I'm gonna smooth that with my finger without compromising my design. So you attached it to the body as well? The part, well, I was gonna, I'm saying to you, if it hit the body like here, 
Yes. You can attach it if you want to for more stability, but if you don't, it does not, it can be out and free. It's up to you. I just decided to attach that side. However, I might leave my other side out and free. I'm attaching that, smoothing it a bit. All in that crease. Impalement. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. So from there, I just got to brush this little piece again right here. His foot is on backwards. All right, I have one ear attached, and after I design the other ear, I'm going to put that on, as you can see. But you Cute. see the ear looks better that we put the design on. And so mm. then, yeah. just to take you to the next step, you can attach your own ear, your next ear. What I'm going to do is take my fingers and not too far apart, but I'm just going to press into the face. I'm taking my two index fingers. If your fingers are too big, you might not be able to do it. So you might just take some kind of tool like we had before and press gently. When you press into these two Places, it's going to be your eyes. You don't want to have them too close. You don't want them to be too far apart. The center, as you press in, you're going to be creating the bridge of the nose, so to speak, or in between the eyes. And these indentions are the sockets for your elephant eyes. You can make eyes. You can put googly eyes in there. You can use stones, uh, you know, like precious gems or whatever, stones those type of things. And from there, we want to roll a coil, but the coil you want it to be thick on one end and more skinnier on the other end. Make sure to press the clay together well to get all the air out. Go ahead and roll. You can see I've rolled a coil where one end is wider and the other end, it's like a cone shaped type of coil. It looks like a carrot or a cone. One side is thicker and one side is skinnier. And it's pretty even. You don't want it to look all lumpy and not neat, so to speak. All right, so from there, what you're going to do is uh, I'm going to take one little piece of clay, roll a ball, smash it in my hand so that it doesn't get too thin, like so. And I'm going to cut the circle in half. Like that. And then I'm going to shape this by curving it like so, kind of like a taco. And I'm going to move my prop and put that down below the face like so. <laughs> kind of looks like a tongue, but it's really not. Oh. See that? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that's the mouth of the elephant and the trunk goes right above that. So I'm going to turn to the side. Okay. See. Okay. The, <laughs> the mouth of the elephant. You know, the trunk 
takes things into the hole of the trunk and then the trunk moves and put like grass into the mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna that. scratch where the sorry, go back to the front. I'm gonna scratch where the trunk is supposed to go, right above the mouth, but right in between the in the middle of the face and above the in, in between the not right in between the eyes, but in that center portion. I learned from I'm gonna add I'll keep some something like that. Add some slip, scratch the trunk, the end of it, the thick end, of course. And we're going to push that on to the face. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see. Mm -hmm. The one thing is that you see my trunk is so long, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what I need to do is cut it somewhere. Take that back off. Really long trunk. And I think I want my trunk to end right here. That looks sufficient. And I'm going to bring the thickness to about right there. Okay. Perfect. So now I'm going to... You have to cut the, the, the thick end and the thin end for proportion. Yeah, it was too long on each, on both ends. Oh. For me. <clears throat> so I've already measured out in my mind how long I want my trunk. I'm going to press that back onto the face. And as I'm pressing it, kind of just working my finger around the edges. And I want my trunk to come up like this mm -hmm. and curve like so. Mm hmm but right now I have to put my prop back because of the weight on the head. And my paper towel. Oh yes, so there you go. The mouth is down there. I have to let the head leather a little bit and get drier before I can move my prop. So now I'm just going to take my finger and work that trunk onto the face. It already had slip around it, so it's really moist around it. Anyway, working that on will dry it up a bit. And just continue to gently bend the trunk so that you can get the desired uh, curve. And when you before you finish that, you're going to need to make a prop for that trunk as well. I'm going to use a piece of clay right now just to hold my trunk up, as you can see. So also, this piece of prop that I had before, I'm going to reuse it to lift this up. I don't want it touching the head. Kind of like in an up fashion. All right, young people. So that concludes our class today. We have to stop. It's like after 12, I'm going to attach my other ear. As far as the tail, you're going to make a, sorry, you're going to roll a coil. One side is going to be thick, one side is going to be thin. This is a lot of clay, so I'm going to cut that in half, break that in half. I'm rolling one side to achieve getting uh, the coil thin on one side. All you do is roll one side and leave the other side alone, meaning like I'm not even touching the side that I want to be thick. All right, find where you want your tail. This is a long coil. I want my <laughs> tail, the thickness to be probably about right there. And the bottom, the end can be about right there. I'm just going to smooth that out by giving it one more roll. And sorry. Then I'm going to attach the tail by adding a indention so that the tail can be right into the 
body a, a part of it. Scratch, slip, attach. Then I want to curve my tail where it's touching the body for me so that it will have stability, but that's just the desired look. But I also want, so I'm gonna add some slip right there. Bring my tail over with a little curve. Also, that little tail could be a handle. Sure can. A part, a part to, you know, pick the bowl up once I'm completely finished. Kim, can I show you what I have so far? Of course. Let me wipe my hands off. And so that's all we're going to be doing for today. Next class, I think I'll probably be able to show you, if I'm finished, the, um, the end, the design. This is the head, the legs, the tail. This is where I'm going to be putting my uh, whatever I'm going to be using it for. All right. So let me just wipe my hands and... Where is Diana? Me? All right, I'm ready. Mm. What? Can you see it? Yeah. Can you go to the side view? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. That looks good. That looks good. So you like to make your uh, trunk and your tail or something. Yes. Can you show it one more time? Something happened to my computer. I couldn't see it. She said, can oh. you show it one more time? Won't see mine. You have to wait, Mr. Uh, Cumberland. Very home. good. That's good. Good job, Ms. Diana. <laughs> Very good. I see somebody wrote me a chat, so I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Uh, Cumberlander. Let's see what you got, Cumberlander. It's nothing but a bowl. It don't matter if that's all you did so far, then you, but I don't see the bowl. How, how do I do? I got it on it. I don't see the bowl. You moving the camera too much. Okay. You see it now? Bring it down. Stop in front of the camera. Bring it down. You got the camera going, pointing the camera up. It's pointed to the ceiling, Mr. Cumberlander. Now it's facing you, but where's the bowl? Keep bringing the, the, the thing down with. Okay. Oh, there it is. I don't see it. You gotta go you gotta down. Go down some. Huh? Camera down some. The whole flap you have to bring it down with. Slide your bowl. Okay, it looked like you made a coil pot. Huh? Did you? Yeah, but I got pot? to. I'm trying to smooth it out. I couldn't make that pot you was talking about. <laughs> I turn in late. <laughs> no problem. You're doing a good job. Okay. Then I can put the. the, 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 the don't forget you're supposed to save some place so that you will be able to make your head. Yeah, I got, I got all that stuff. Okay, no problem. Mm. Anybody else have something they want to show or share? Yeah, this. What happened to you? Uh, I have tendinitis. The doctor said, I guess from needing that clay and stuff too much. So... She told me to rest this hand for a while. That's why I wasn't able to make mine today. It's okay. Were you able yeah. to put your uh, uh, abstract back together? Not yet. I had to just stop using my hand, she said. I had to just stop because it was causing me too much pain. But I, I have it to put together. I am going to okay. do that as soon as I can get back to work. Okay. Thank y'all so much for joining the class. We have you, so long today. Please go ahead and complete.
the rest of your projects. If you want to get to this uh, particular project later, it's no problem. It was just something fun that we could all do together. And um, I'll see you next class. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. Thanks for joining Kimberly Wright with Handbuilt Pottery and Sculpture. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.